Hi guys, welcome to another beer review and uh, today we're going over to Magic Rock and we're having a look at a can of the Dark Arts which is the Surreal Stout and this is clocking in at, where's the ABV, I've probably already gone past it quite a few times because I'm an idiot, 6% uh, ABV. Now I'm sure I've had this beer a few times but I'm not too sure if I've actually reviewed it. In fact, um, the Magic Rock Core range, aside from Common Grounds and High Wire Grapefruits, um, I've not really had too many times. Um, in fact, there's a lot of quite, you know, established craft breweries. Oh no, I referred to Magic Rock as a craft brewery. How dare I? Um, they're still, you can still call them a craft brewery. Do you, do you know what I mean? It's, well, what does that term even mean? Like, why is there such a sh shook the desk you're stood on? Who gives a fuck, really, um, about who owns who? Is the beer still tasting good? Yeah, because, you know, Common Grounds, one of the best coffee porters you can get. And uh, that is going to be my 2019 Christmas beer. So I can't wait to go to booths and take advantage of there, get six cans for five um or get five cans and get six can three um so yeah i'm going to be stocking on uh, the high on the common grounds because i just love that beer and uh yeah so i'm not sure if i have reviewed this on the channel um and i can't remember the last time i had this one but um i was at my local tesco's i picked up uh, obviously a few of the forged and 40 mil jobbies but i wanted to take advantage of the four for six pound uh, so i picked up um three Magic Rock Core Range beers, which you're going to probably see uh, uploaded one after the other. Probably not. Don't keep promises about the structure of your channel, because guess what, Peter? You don't stick to it. Um, but yeah, I thought I'll give them a try. Four for six quid. You know, I'm a big fan of Magic Rock. I do enjoy them. Um, I know people have jumped ship and blah, 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 but they're a good local business. You know what? If, if you're offered a handsome amount of money for something that you've devoted your time, love and passion for, then you know what? I've got so much respect for you for taking that money. Um, because at the end of the day, if you don't accept a big paycheck and you're a business, you're probably a bad businessman. Just going to put it out there. Um, and a lot of people who are like complaining about the buyout, so like people who've got money anyway, so... Do you know what I mean? They'll kick off about this, but they'll still go to like uh, McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, Five Guys. You know, do you know what I mean? It's just like, and the, the car that they're driving is mass produced. Um, and I know people are like, oh, imagine other people are buying them. There's like some dodgy connotations with the company that's buying them. Um, a lot of bad things happening in the world are funded by things that we willingly or willingly pay for in our daily lives so do you know what i mean i don't think it's going to make that much difference to be honest um, the world's a shitty place full of shitty people who do shitty things so i'm just here in my small little patch trying to make the best of what i have and uh, when i can get good beer at an affordable price why would i ever complain Anyway, most most of the fucking ponces who, you know, complain about oh the, the craft beer and like oh this company sold out are people who are like earning six figure salaries anyway. So, do you know what I mean? It's like shut the fuck up, drink what you want to drink, and just move the fuck on, because most of you are fucking arseholes who uh, will kick off about. You know, Magic Rock getting bought out, Beaver Town getting, you know, cash injections. This brewery is owned by this brewery now. But most of you people are the ones who will fleece the trade market with beers. To the point where breweries like Cantillon are doing their best to make sure that people actually buy the beers for themselves to enjoy. So, yeah, it just it just winds me up, and I don't know why it does, because 
you spend the money your way you want to. Do you know what I mean? You buy what you want to buy. You've earned that money. You might not have earned that money, but it, at the end of the day, it's your money. You make the decision how you use that money, and who cares what I've got to think about it? Do you know what I mean? It just, oh, it just really does get to me sometimes. But, um, yeah, Magic Rock. Luminance, £3 in a supermarket. One of the best supermarket New England-style IPAs that you can buy. Uh, Common Grounds, one of the best coffee porters you'll ever have. And uh, High Wire Grapefruit, do you know what I mean? What what more can I say? Anyway, plus the, the tap room um, in Huddersfield is such a lovely place. And uh, a real pioneer of that American-style tap room. Um, that a lot of people have copied since. And uh, as far as I can see, Magic Rock do a hell of a lot for the local economy and uh, the local area. So who cares who they've been bought out by? Anyway, see, I've got me a Craft Bats Master glass. <coughs> it's not bubble inside. Can't speak. Probably should shut up and stop the video, but I'm not going to. Anyway, Dark Arts, Surreal Stout, 6% ABV. Let's get this opened and see what we get. Oh, and by the way, if you disagree with my viewpoint, that's fair enough. That's the great thing about the, well, even though we're having that right taken away from us, it would seem. Um, if you've got an opinion, you should be able to share it. And if people critique it, then fair play. But, um, yeah. Anyway. Off the soapbox now and on to the beer. Lovely artwork, as per usual, from Drew Millwood. Um, just Magic Rock's identity as a brand. Um, and their imagery on their beers and that sort of thing. You know, just one of the best looking core rangers out there. Even though I was st I was still a big fan of the um, the older style with the little characters on the uh, cans and bottles, but um yeah, a salty kiss, a really accessible goes beer, uh, named after something um, that a lot of people are too wimpy to actually act out with their better halves. Oh, people just annoy me, man. They just rarely annoy me. Anyway. Beer in the glass, and that is looking really bang tidy. Um, I'm going to say that's almost black, but I can see some really dark oaky tones bleeding from the sides of the glass, especially here at the bottom. Uh, beer poured with about three fingers worth of a nice beige looking head. And uh, yeah, it poured actually really nicely. So hopefully I can get a nose through that enforced head. So let's see. And I am getting a subtle hint. It's got that sort of like musky, woody, sweet, like cola aroma. A little bit of grated baker's chocolate. Dip your nose in for good measure. A little bit of um, like a really dark caramel. But yeah, it's got it's got a cola aspect to it but i've got a feeling i'm not getting the full waft because of how enforced that head is and it's sticking round to be fair be a lovely action on that beer not my favorite glass i'm not i'm not the biggest fan of this shape of glass um but yeah look i love the artwork on it anyway positive let's not moan and just enjoy the beer Smells good. Let's give it a taste. Cheers, guys. Mm. Mm, that's nice. Do you know what? I don't believe smoked malts have been used in this. <clears throat> but it does have a really nice, gentle heated like smokiness 
doesn't go into detail about the uh, the actual ingredients themselves. Really dark chocolate character coming through. There's that woody smokiness. There's that slight musky damp character. It's got a lovely body to it for a 6% stout. It's not gloopy by any stretch. You wouldn't expect it to be. But it does have a little bit of a oomph to the body. It's not just like a you know, a slightly light bodied dry stout. Oh, that's really good. Flavour wise, it's it's kind of reminding me of um, Even More Jesus by Evil Twin Bruin. A beer that will forever stick in my mind as like a proper old school Russian Imperial Stout. This has those like big bold flavours, but of course no booze. A little bit of a slightly lighter mouthfeel. <laughs> It's not gloopy or anything like that. But yeah, this is... This is really damn good. There's a little bit of slight roasted coffee in there. It's got big, earthy, savoury tones. There's a little bit of a, you know, confectory sweetness. A little bit of a cakiness there. But yeah, big smokiness. Which I really like. To the point where it's almost got like a little bit of a smoky harshness. Mm. So what I might be doing. I might be getting this. As, as well as Common Grounds. Because this is just the perfect sort of beer. That you can have a couple of. On a slightly cold night. Might be damp outside. You've got your blanket. You've got you know your, your, your fairy lights. You've got your candle. You know, you're getting a bit cosy. I mean, just, this is so cosy right now. You can't see me, which is always a positive. But yeah, this is just so tranquil. You've got the ambience of the, uh, the streets outside. I'm going to keep the video like this for the rest of it. Yeah, that, that's really damn good. Um, I'm having a moment like I did when I had Black Betty from Beavertown. Um, a beer that I'd probably had a couple of times in its heyday. But revisiting it, it's just like, wow. Bags full of flavour. So robust. So drinkable as well. Let's put the light back on. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I really like that. It's got like cocoa powder character mm -mm 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 -mm. and as part of a four for six quid deal you'd happily get four cans of that for six quid do you know what i mean i know now that i can stock up on beers for winter and christmas time and it's not going to break the you know, it's not going to break the balance. Do you know what I mean? It's not going to burn too much of a hole in my wallet. I really, really like that. To me, this is like um, an old school Russian Imperial style condensed into a, um, a sessionable form. But yeah, really rich, robust. I think my favourite characteristic is that smoky, charred character. Just works beautifully with the rest of those flavours. Yeah, and four for six quid? It's ridiculous. That's less than like one seventy five a can. Are you kidding me? Just the quality that we're getting in supermarkets. I mean, yeah, I'd love to support my local bottle shops. I love to support um, online retailers. Uh, whenever I'm in a city or a new town, I'm always looking for a small shop to buy beers from. Um, but it's just nice to know that when you're doing your weekly shop, you can get hold of this. And this. And like the Cloudwater Brewdog beer, the Luminance 
Um, we're even getting some Belgian beers in the supermarkets. So we've had some in supermarkets for a while. Um, do you know what I mean? It's like getting one of those big, like, 770 bottles of uh, Leffy Brun is just decadent in itself. So, you know, you don't always have to feel that pressure to spend loads um, in, in, in a local bottle shop. And I, I think we need to have a balance of that because this hobby can cost so much money. And, you know, I'm, I'm just a working class guy on a minimum, minimum wage, zero hours contract. Yeah, I do splurge every now and then whenever I go to like Manchester or I've got Northern Beer Temple in Wigan, one of my favourite bottle shops ever. Highly, highly recommend you go there. But it's just great to know that I've got a Tesco's, I've got an Asda, I've got a Morrison's, I've got uh, Booth's nearby, I've got um, interesting range of beers in uh, Lidl, Aldi, uh, even like B&M Bargains and Iceland have got, you know, an interesting little range of beers that just breaks away from the, you know, the macro stuff. Even though I've got no problem with macro. So it's just nice to know that I could get a robust, flavoursome stout for, like, less than two quid a can if I go with the special promotions. And, um, yeah, since the... The whole sort of buyout takeover. I can't remember really what it was because really don't care. Um, I've not had a bad experience with pre-existing beers from Magic Rock. I've not really had too many new beers from Magic Rock since the whole thing. Um, but yeah, high wire grapefruit. A common feature uh, in my little beer cupboard and in the fridge. Uh, common grounds, just oh love that being all iterations and all versions of it um when i was at a bottle show with rob and uh ross from being omicom and some other guys um you know rob brought like a there were like three bottles of it produced of uh, a stout that they'd done i think for a festival that cloudwater involved in i'm not too sure and that was just beautiful and obviously that's long before um what happened but yeah, it's, they still make really enjoyable beers for me. And uh, it seems like they're going to continue to do so for as long as possible. And yeah, I think fair play to everyone over at Magic Rock. Um, because it's so well deserved. And as far as I can see and from what I've experienced, the quality, the individuality uh, is still there. Uh, but people will shun them because they're macro and it, it's so sad it's so sad that people will turn their back on someone who's been successful and I think that says a lot about our culture in general it's like people just are brought up to hate the wealthy and the rich who yeah there's a lot of bullshit you know it, it pisses me off that Amazon don't pay tax and that insert company here doesn't pay tax you know if if those companies just like paid the basic rate of tax that they should just think of what we could achieve but you know i don't think you you should penalize or dehumanize someone just because they've made a name for themselves they've made a fuck ton of money or even if people like inherited money it's like what do you care at the end of the day anyway bit of a ranty sort of video but it, it, it just I love this community I love the industry but like every hobby and uh, special interest you're always going to get arseholes and just like um, arseholes everybody has an opinion so you know what, I'm not going to disrespect someone because they're against this. That's up to them. Um, but nine times out of ten, they can afford to you know, maintain that lifestyle of you know doing big trades with people in the, the US and around the world. But you know, not all of us can do that. And uh, some of us modest drinkers want a, a high quality product. Um, and thankfully, the supermarkets are starting to you know get into that. I don't think it'll ever get to that point where the supermarkets overtake, 
you know, independent retails. Um, I just don't, it's just not going to happen for me personally. Um, and yeah, I think I made a really good point on um, the uh, post could be alive thing that Craig did. Well, people agreed with me. I can't remember what I said because it was over a week ago and I was having a few drinks, but it's like, you have a fine balance. Do you know what I mean? It just, I don't know, it just, it just winds you up. And I'm just thankful that I've got a really good beer that I've nearly finished in this duration of this video. I think I made a video, like, defending and uh, promoting Magic Rock, but they'd never be able to use um, uh, to, like, get their product out there because of the, the foul language and the opinions included. But needless to say, this is a damn good beer. So, so good. I want to try that on draft. I need to go to the, the tap room again in uh, Huddersfield. Beautiful part of the country. Um, and who knows, probably um, at some point towards the end of the year, maybe uh, next year, I'll be making another trip up there with uh, Rob from Hop Scene. And um, yeah, Magic Rock. I'll, I'll always buy their beers because I'm a big fan of them. And uh, I even still have my Magic Rock t-shirt. Although the screen printing, the, the thing that they've used, is it vinyl? starting to crack but uh no need to worry don't sweat the swall stuff just you enjoy beer you enjoy what you want to enjoy whether it be beer fashion culture food politics do you know what you be you don't just become a droning boring sack of bones covered in gloopy flesh because there's nothing more dull or uninteresting than just a boring person. Do you know what I mean? But there's nothing wrong with being boring. So, you know, just do what you want to do. Be who you want to be. As long as it doesn't, you know, impeach other people's rights or affect their lives directly. Don't worry about it. Do you know what I mean? Just be a good person. <clears throat> Don't know where that came from. But, um, yeah. So, Dark Arts from Magic Rock. Uh, I'm going to give that an 8.75 out of 10. I think that's really damn good. And I will be buying more of that for this uh, upcoming Christmas to go along with um, Common Grounds. Mm -mm -mm. I'll have to do a growler of Common Grounds fresh from the tap. That would be wonderful. Anyway, if you tried this beer, then I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below. Um, if you've got any opinions on what I've said in the video, feel free to wear them. Um, I'm not one of these people who will delete comments or block people. No matter what is said, I think that's just a danger, dangerous precedent um, that we are setting in this um, supposedly developed society, but we're able to say less and less and less, it would seem. And there will be people who will kick off over, you know, someone's opinion on beer, but hey-ho, that's just the way the world works. And if uh, my fellow nihilists and fatalists we've come to uh, appreciate that anyway go check out magic rock love to hear your thoughts opinions on the beer and um yeah hope nobody unsubscribes cheers for watching and i shall see you all later don't tread on me don't do that in videos people might get the wrong impression about this backdrop but uh oh well